This is the first video in the video series of numerical methods with Python, and the reason that I wanted to make this video series is because just like my video series of orbital mechanics with Python, that I've seen a lot of great sources on the internet that are talking about the math and derivations behind these concepts, but again, I haven't seen any that actually go deep into how to, how to apply it into software, which I feel like is a very important thing and how you actually use it in industry. And numerical methods have many applications in basically every STEM field, not just orbital mechanics. So I feel like this video series could be beneficial to a lot of people in all different types of STEM fields. So for the first video, I'm going to be doing Newton's method of root solving the single variable case. This is a very famous algorithm, a numerical algorithm, in order to be able to solve for the roots of a function. Uh, it is very important, and right here I'm covering the single variable case, where later I will cover the multivariable case, which is a little bit more complicated. But overall, conceptually, what is root solving is just finding the zero of a function. So in this example plot I have here is just some arbitrary polynomial, x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 3, where it has four zeros, as you can see here in the plot. And the whole point of root solving is to say, how can I numerically find these? Because a lot of the times, it, it's not a very simple function at all. This is just a very simple case in order to be, actual, be able to teach it to you. So you can see there's four zeros here. And with this kind of iterative scheme, it really depends on what your initial guess is. So say that you wanted to find what this zero was over here, you'd have to take an initial guess along this curve because as soon as you get past this inflection point and over here, whatever initial guess you get is actually gonna solve for this root. Same thing for this inflection point, you're gonna solve for this root. And again, for the final inflection point, you'd solve for this root. So that's basically what it is. The problem that you're trying to solve is to find the zero of a function and do it numerically. So here's a conceptual, basically, understanding of how this method works, which it involves using the derivative to estimate what the zero of a function is. So say uh, this scion line again is a function that you're trying to find the zero of, which happens to be right here, uh, but you don't know that. So you say you just take a first initial guess. So this is a zoomed in plot of this. So I'm finding the zero over here, like roughly like negative 2.7. So what you do is you'd have some sort of initial guess Right, so for this case, I just initially guessed negative 3.5. And what you do is you find the derivative of the function at that point, which is represented by this um, purple line. And you follow this purple line, you follow the derivative until the derivative, this line itself, reaches y equals zero. And you take this point, whatever this x value is, like negative 3.01 or something, and then you use that for your next guess. So then for your guess two, uh, you're going to use this point, find the derivative, draw a line until that this line hits y equals zero, then again, and then you just keep doing that iteratively. And you can see that you're getting closer and closer to the answer because the true answer is right here about negative 2.7. And you started from negative 3.5. And then even just in the first step, you got to almost negative three. So you're getting closer and closer to that. And then the second step, you get really close to about negative 2.8. And the way that this um, iteration, the way you do it, and what the stop condition is, is that when you're delta x, so the change in between consecutive guesses gets smaller than some tolerance. So you can see here at the first guess uh, to the second guess, you have a pretty big uh, delta x that I call it. And then on the next one, that, Elta, that delta x decreases. So then again, if you could imagine yourself doing this again right here, draw the line of the derivative and find whatever point, the delta x would get even smaller and that's gonna converge. So eventually when it converges to some uh, arbitrary tolerance value, a lot of times people use like 10 to negative 9, 10 to negative 12, whatever kind of accuracy you need. When that, the delta x, so when the change in your guesses becomes that small, you can consider that solved. So you know what the x uh, root is. So that's kind of conceptually what's going on here. And then the derivation for it, um, I'm not going to go too, I'm not going to take too much time for the derivation, but I will give uh, links in the description for videos that do, because uh, specifically one video that I found does a great, he does a great job of deriving kind of how Newton came up with this. But basically you can start with the fact that two points make a line. Uh, so your two points are the value of the function at whatever your guess is and zero, because you know that you're trying to find the, um, when that line is going to equal zero. So you start with the simple equation of y equals mx plus b, just the equation of a line. So the definition of the slope of a line is a change in y over change in x from two points, and you have two points. So for this case, y2 equals zero, because one of the points that you have is when y equals zero, so that's one of the points, and y1 is just the, the function at whatever guess value you have, and then x1 and x2. Uh, you know x1, but you don't know x2, so you're just going to call that delta x, some delta x value. So based on this delta x um, 
we know we have some uh, known values, as, busy, as I just said, and then solving for delta x, so then uh, moving the slope down here to the denominator, moving x1 minus x2 to the numerator, you get this equation delta x equals y1 because y2 equals 0 over m, uh, where m is just a derivative of the function. Uh, so, you, so you know these two values. You know y1 is a function evaluated at your x guess, and then you know that the slope is a derivative evaluated at the x guess. So from that, you can solve that delta x actually just equals the function value at your x guess over the derivative at that x guess. So then from this is delta x, what you get is the equation right here of the iterative scheme, which is your next guess, xn plus 1, equals your guess right now, xn minus the delta x, where the delta x is the function value at x over the derivative value at x. So that's kind of the derivation for it. And how you get there. And this is the equation, this is a very important equation as is all those. Basically, this is how you're going to take your next guess. So as far as software algorithm, I have, uh, I'm going to go deeper into it uh, next video, but here's just the Python version of how to do this. So you, the input to the function, uh, and I call it Newton single because there's Newton's multivariable as well. So you have f, which is whatever function you have, you have your derivative f prime, and then your initial guess x0, and then some tolerance that can be whatever you want. So you can calculate delta x just like that. And then the while loop, so your stop condition is, so while the absolute value of the delta x value is greater than tolerance, keep iterating. So once this value is less than tolerance, you can be done iterating. And just like I showed in the algorithm, uh, calculate the next guess, calculate the new delta x, and then reassign the guess to the current guess, just how you put it in the software. And then step, uh, you can have step if you want to or not, but basically just keeps count of how many steps if you're interested to know how many steps it took to solve the problem. And again, I'm going to go deeper into the software in the next video because that's what I'm doing with the series is uh, numerical methods um, with Python. So in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and actually go deeper into the deeper into the software and then also uh, do some test cases and also show how uh, it's applicable in some problem solver mechanics. So yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, leave any questions in the comments and thank you for watching.